Welcome to this video tutorial on masking with channels on Photoshop. My name is Rosie Sue and I'm broadcasting from a tiny corner in this world in a little country called New Zealand. If you're new here, I would absolutely love a thumbs up and better yet, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy today's video. Today, I will walk you through a different selection method using channel selection. This is a great option to explore if the traditional methods of select and mask just doesn't quite produce the results you're after. So let's dive in. Before we look at channels, let's have a quick look at how RGB works. So that's red, green, and blue. I will show you how quickly we can extract these three colors from the image and then combine the, these three colors to recreate this image that you see on screen which by the way is from Adobe Stock. And if you haven't checked out Adobe Stock, definitely do. Every image that you see on screen is composed of three colors. So red, green, and blue. If you look at your screen and zoom in, you will see one color. So let's take a look at this one in here. So if I zoom all the way in here, notice how we see this one color. So zooming right into the pixels in here. However, if you zoom right into each pixel, you will see three colors, red, green, and blue. So even black and white photos on screen are made up of these three colors. So perhaps this image may be more familiar for those who already have a sense of what I'm talking about. So the red, green, and blue that you see on screens, you know, on the newer technology that we have. Well, by new, I mean, obviously, it's been a lot of decades now. Right, so let's dive in and I will walk you through this right now. In this image in here, you can see uh, that we've only got one layer and then I'll navigate over to the channels panel here. In the channels panel, like the rhyming of that, <laughs> here you will see that um, this photo is made up of three colors. So we have RGB in here and then you have your red, green and blue. Now when we toggle these off um, and you can see that I'm just toggling each one, red, green and blue individually. You may have seen this before, may have accidentally clicked on it, not really have known what this does. You might be thinking, uh, hang on, but it's black and white. So let me explain um, how these colors are represented in here. So the bright areas, so if we take a look at green, for instance, in here. So in this particular image, it's just the way that this is represented with black and white. It's not actually black and white. So with this green channel, for instance, the bright areas in the photo indicates that this area has more green light. So darker areas will have less green light, for instance, and black areas will have absolutely no green light. So the same goes for these two um, other channels with the blue and the red. So the same concept in here. Now let me demonstrate how we can extract each of these three colors and separate them from the image. Once I've done that, I will then show you how by combining these three colors that will give you this image. So let's get started. What I will do is I will start, let's go in this order, shall we? So red, green, and blue. So with red in here, what I will do is um, to simply extract this red color. What I will do is hold down the um, control key if you're on a Windows or command if you're on the Mac and you select the channel. Now on screen in here, you will see the selection. The selection that you are seeing in here, all the red light that is present uh, for this channel. Now I will hop over to um, the layers panel and what we need to do is we need to create a solid color. Down at the very bottom in here, I will tap on that and choose solid color. What I have to do now is I have to choose the color red. However, we can't just be choosing any random uh, red color in here. We need it to be absolutely red. So what I will do is in here, the input, notice how these are RGB. There's 255 already in here. So because I just highlighted my curse up there, I will change the green and blue values to zero. So the value of 255 is the absolute maximum value um, for each color. So what I'm trying to do in here is just ensure that I have 
zero green and zero blue and we have just red for this particular red channel so what I will do is I will click OK and then next what I will do is turn this visibility off and then highlight uh, the original layer go back to channels and repeat the same process for the other two which is your green so holding the command and selecting green okay so now that's the green selected in here hop over back to layers back inside layers in here uh, choose solid color again so repeating the process this time you want to choose green and then in here ensure the rgb so the value for red will be zero this time green is 255 and blue is as you guessed zero same thing again uh, toggle this off go back to your layers and then hop over to your channels back in your channels in here what we will do is last but not least the blue hold down your command or control in windows in here hop over back to layers so again if you don't know name of the game already this will select all the blue colors go back to layers in here uh, highlight and choose well uh, a solid color and then this creates another solid color in here and we will choose finally blue and zero for red zero for green ensure blue is on 255 and hit OK so let's move on now what we need to do is all of these three in here if we toggle this background off at the moment these are just the colors so that's not exactly what we want because we keep talking about um, the light so in order to convert this to light we have something in Photoshop called green and we can find that under the blending mode with the first one in red I'll go and choose blending mode choose green next one green blending mode also choose green and blue we will also choose green as well right so at the moment uh, if you have a look at each of these you can see that that's the blue light in here that's the green and finally you have got red but we have all these three in here but combined uh, you can't uh, really make out the image just yet the reason we can't see the image yet is because in order to see the light you will need the light to reflect off the surface which has no light now as mentioned earlier do you remember how we were looking at the channels and when we looked at the channels how i highlighted uh, for you before is the dark or black areas will have no light so these three colors the red green and blue these they are light um, what we need to do now is simply create a black layer in order to see this so what I'll do is I'll toggle all of these off just so we can have a nice big reveal. Uh, at the very bottom in here, I will um, simply go ahead and choose a new solid color. And this time, yep, that's exactly what I want. Um, I want black, so ab absolutely no light. Um, so before I move on in here, if you notice how in here, so red, green, and blue, when the values are zero, um, that is absolutely um, black. So what I'll do is click on OK. All right, so now we have the solid color. So if you remember in here, each of these in here, it's just the light for each color. All right, so with the light of just these three colors, red, green, and blue, when you combine them on its own, and we've just added the dark solid in the background, what you will get, ta-da, you will get the image so how amazing is that so for those of you that didn't know this you've learned something now now let us move on to the second component of this tutorial we will explore how you can make selections using channels in Photoshop firstly let's take a look at using select subject just for comparison I will click on the quick selection tool and click on select subject. Then I will go into the select and mask workspace. I'll grab my refine edge brush tool. So that is over on the left hand side. Then hop over to the right hand side and you have the option to change the view mode. So whether you prefer to view this on an overlay on black or etc. I have selected onion skin. So I'm going in with my Refine Edge Brush tool just to clean up the edges in here. So there's additional options over on the right hand side for you to explore. Then I will hit OK. 
Next, I will go and click at the very bottom um, to add a layer mask. So that's pretty much it for the select subject process. I just wanted to demonstrate an alternative method and to show you a comparison. It is a pretty amazing technology. Adobe did bring this out a couple of years ago and they've always made improvements to it. So it's really great if you want that automation um, because it's using Adobe Sensei, which is the artificial intelligence component. However, in this particular example, you can see that there's a bit of fringing happening. Um, that's just a term uh, to describe the loss of details on the hair. And perhaps there's also too much white on the edges. So what we'll do is we will have a look at a different method, which is channel selection. By the way, for those of you that are watching this video or perhaps those that work in our program every day, we always try and stress that there's no right or wrong way of doing something. So I'm not saying that select subject is inferior to this method. It's simply just an alternative to add to your toolkit of understanding what you could use with our programs. Let's dive straight into this. So hop over to the channels panel over on the right hand side. And what we'll do is we'll choose the blue channel in here and make a duplicate. Next, what we want to do is we want to go up to image in here, select your adjustments and go to levels. So what we're trying to do now is we want to make the dark darker by dragging that um, from the left hand slider in here. Over on the right hand side as well is you can also drag that over just to make adjustments to the brightness and then also you can also toggle with the midpoint levels in here. Once you're happy with that, click OK. Then next we will grab the object selection tool which is over on the left hand side. So make a selection of this. If you haven't discovered this tool yet, it's pretty awesome, makes the selection for you. Then over at the very top, click and go into the Select and Mask workspace. In the Select and Mask workspace, in here I've chosen the view mode as overlay this time. And what I will do is I will grab the Refine Edge Brush tool as well and just clean up the edges. I'm just adjusting the brush size and also the hardness of the brush as well. I'm going in and I'm just swiping that over the hair edges just to have a cleaner edge on here. Next, let's click OK once you're happy with that. And then now what we can do is we can delete this copy in here in our channels panel. Then hop back over to the layers and click on the layer mask. To bring back the selection, simply hold down the command key and click on the layer mask in here. And then what we want to do next is we want to create a new layer. Now with the brush tool, what we are going to do is we are going to grab the color of the hair and we will just click and paint over to bring in some of the details that we lost when we were using the Refine Edge brush tool. So you can spend as much time as you want in here to closely match the color of the hair. Um, as closely as possible uh, with the actual image in here. But what I'll do is I think I'm pretty happy with where I got to. I will simply add a background in here just so we can see what this looks like. So as you can see, this is quite a different result to when I use the select subject method. So today's tutorial is just to demonstrate to you the differences and results that you can get from using the channel selection and masking with channels in Photoshop. So the left hand side is the select subject that I used earlier and then on the right hand side is the result for when I use the channel selection. So if we zoom right in here you can see again the fringing that has happened um, with the select subject whereas now on screen with the channels if we zoom in it's done a pretty good job using this method in here. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something new as well. 
If you like this video, I would really love a thumbs up and even better if you could subscribe as well. I'll see you all in my next video.